In this video, we're going to discuss spoilers for The Last of Us Part 2, so you've been warned. So, if you've been living under a rock or just been out of YouTube or social media in general, the famous Angry Joe and Girlfriend Reviews have finally released their reviews on The Last of Us Part 2. Both videos at this moment is trending on YouTube, and I have to say, both reviews are so good and deserve to be trending on YouTube. Well made reviews, funny as hell, and seeing how Joe and the other Joe and the other fella who does videos with them doing mini skits in their video was hilarious. And that Batman Dark Knight reference in Girlfriend's Review, honestly legendary. Now, one thing that is very obvious by both reviews is that their own insight and opinions about the game are totally different. We will talk about why both Angry Joe and Girlfriend Reviews both have different views on this game. Because the thing is that Angry Joe actually hated the story, but Girlfriend Reviews loved it. And why some people reacting to these reviews show why there's a serious problem in the gaming community. So first let's talk about Angry Joe. His review was such an entertaining video, incredibly funny, and he talked about everything that he liked about the game and everything he disliked about the game. He liked the graphics, the facial animations, the gameplay, everything else except the story. He disliked how they killed Joel, and that is basically the whole video. By killing Joel, what he experienced after that scene, it just never brought him back in the game. That was the moment he lost complete immersion, just like a lot of people have been saying on social media. And playing as Abby truly threw him off, and Ellie not killing Abby at the end, he just felt like he wasted his time and that Neil Druckmann and Naughty Dog in some ways destroyed the characters that he loved. Now this is coming from somebody who basically gave The Last of Us Part 1 a 10 out of 10. I remember seeing that review and he actually did it. He loved that story and he showed why he loved that story. So yeah, he was very disappointed when he played The Last of Us Part 2 and he actually gave the game a 6. Now, is he right to give this game a 6? Well, yes, it's his opinion and he just did not enjoy the game. Simple as that. He tried it out and it just wasn't the game for him. Now, here's where we will talk about one of the problems that we have in the gaming community with Angry Joe's review. It's not Angry Joe's review or his opinions about the game. That's not the problem. The problem lies with the people who are using Angry Joe's reviews or Skill Up's review as quote unquote the most unbiased, the most accurate, and the most honest reviews out there, and ridiculing others who say anything positive about The Last of Us Part 2, or ridiculing others who review this game in a positive light. Trying to push the narrative of if you like this game, you're a fanboy shill who loves hot garbage. People really try to act like they really cared about Angry Joe's reviews because supposedly he's unbiased, when in reality, we all knew Angry Joe hated what Naughty Dog did to Joel and is the sole reason why he got lost in the game and couldn't get immersed at all, and this is why some people were anticipating his review. Plus, he already knew that Joel was going to be killed because he got leaked, so he went into this game already hating that for a fact. Some people did not go to his review just to hear his critiques on the game but to have more ammo to make fun of others who like this game and make others feel like they know best. Their ego is so big, it's truly sad to see. Cause for example, imagine the fact that Angry Joe said he liked the game. Watch people actually go against him or discredit his review. It's really sad to see how the internet is behaving with this. Angry Joe did a fantastic review, and even though it doesn't match my own thoughts about the game, I can still appreciate the different insight other people have on this divisive piece of art. Now, talking about appreciating different types of opinions, let's head into Girlfriend's Review's review of The Last of Us Part 2. Their video was fantastic, very informative, and funny as well. They did comparisons on how this game took an approach to storytelling similar to Pulp Fiction, a movie structured in such a weird way, far away from traditional ways of, of storytelling, that it just works. Some people back then did not like Pulp Fiction because of how it was structured, but with time passing on, it is now considered one of the great films ever made, which is very interesting. And it's a movie that's truly not for everyone. 
And when I heard them saying this, that the story of The Last of Us Part 2 kind of reminds them of how Pulp Fiction was structured, I completely lost my mind because that's exactly the same thing I thought after finishing this game. I even called my cousin saying that this game literally is structured and feels like Pulp Fiction. And honestly, I dig it. They also compared Naughty Dog's intention of the story to be similar to Gone Girl, where they test your personal bias halfway through the game when they make you play as Joel's killer, Abby. And that's such an interesting way to describe this game. Girlfriend reviews talk about how these devices of storytelling truly stick the landing with one of the most risky ways to tell a story. Because even though it's not a story that we wanted, it's a story that we needed, like it or not, and only a fool will call it lazy writing. I'm not going to say anything more about their review. Please, check them out because truly they're one of the best reviews for a complex game like The Last of Us Part 2 that I have truly ever seen. The way they explain this game is truly better than what I will ever, ever be able to do. I encourage you guys to watch both Angry Joe and Girlfriend Reviews in full. They are truly a great watch and undoubtedly informative reviews with two drastically different views on the story that are worth watching. I'll leave both videos in the description down below. So, now to answer the question, who is right about The Last of Us Part 2 between these two reviewers of this game? In all honesty, both are right. Why? Because Joe has his own reasons for disliking the story, but Girlfriend Reviews also has their own reasons for liking the story. And this is where we tackle one of the biggest problems with not just in the gaming community, but us as human beings in general. We want to always be right. We think that if our opinions aren't met by others, then the others are just wrong. Thinking a movie or a book or a game is trash because you didn't get what you wanted and you trash on others that differ from your opinion is truly a regressive way to act. There are some people that possibly don't want to admit that they just did not understand what Naughty Dog was trying to do with The Last of Us Part 2, and instead, they decide to ridicule those who say they understand the story, who come with different views, possibilities, and interpreting the game in their own way. Now, I will also call out those who say that they understand the story and ridicule others who say that they just did not enjoy the story. Both of these types of people ridiculing each other is just showing how immature they really are, and this shouldn't be the way we act. It's not acceptable. Also, we have to touch on the fabrication of the lies surrounding this game, that this game is SJW and LGBT propaganda to ruin entertainment. Girlfriend Reviews touched on this subject at the end of her review video, and there's nothing but facts there, and I encourage you guys to see it. In my opinion, there's no coincidence that the moment the leaks happened and it was shown that Joel was killed by Abby, after that, the community suffered so much with so many people just fabricating so many things about this game. Some people truly showing actions of bigotry, ignorance, threatening the lives of developers who made the game, spreading so much hate, it truly was confusing times to be part of the gaming community. People were treating each other like crap, and if anyone was positive or excited for this game, you were ridiculed, called names, or people just truly hating you for having an opinion. There's no coincidence that before the leaks, very few people had a problem with Naughty Dog having Ellie as a lesbian. Almost no one cared that the mystery woman, now known as Abby, that she was just very big and very strong. Nobody really cared. But all of a sudden, they started to care after Joel's death was leaked. Also, people tried to claim that Naughty Dog killing Joel was just because they thought white men are bad and women are good. The Go Woke and Go Broke community went full force hating on this game when the idea of this game being SJW propaganda was intentionally fabricated and spread by content creators known to fabricate and stir up hate and drama for their own financial gain. And what's more sad is that their followers actually act like sheep, believing everything they say. I wouldn't be surprised if one of their creators said 2 plus 2 is 5 and they would just believe it. This truly is a big problem in the community which is very cancerous 
and is the roots of this negativity. And it's truly one of the reasons why this game on Metacritic got review bombs with the most disgusting and just the most baseless opinions on this game, copying and pasting what these hateful creators have said against The Last of Us Part 2. You can say what you want about the game, good or bad, that's not a problem. The problem is, people trying to justify that the hateful comments they give out is just an opinion and at the end of the day that they just have freedom of speech. Sorry, but that's not freedom of speech. That's abusing and spreading hate to others for your own satisfaction and that's not acceptable. Please, let's raise awareness on this situation more so that future games that come out don't suffer by the hands of toxic people online who truly are a minority but truly are loud as hell. Let's be louder than them. Don't matter if we don't agree on certain things, because I know that one thing we could agree on is that no one deserves to be bullied for having an opinion. If you found this video to be informative or useful, please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Also, like the video and share the video so we can help spread this message to the whole community if possible. Follow me on the socials and let's have a great conversation there. Stay positive, stay safe, keep playing, and I'll see you guys next time.